through the preaching and the teaching of your word. I pray for a spirit of understanding yes, Lord. that we not come with enticing words of men's wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power that our faith not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of Almighty God. Yes. Lord, we thank you and we honor you for being in this place. Yes, Lord. And we speak the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. the name that is above every name, yes. the name that every knee should bow and every tongue would confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. We thank you, honor you, and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Take a few minutes and just greet the people around you. You might not have had a chance to say hello, shake a hand, greet somebody around you. Amen. Before you take your seats, before you take your seats, we're going to open up with our declaration. Amen. I want us to get used to declaring who we are in Christ. Amen. Before you take your seats. Just take a look at the screen. We're going to declare. Before you take your seats, I want you to look at the screen. We're going to declare while you're still standing. Amen. Everybody ready? Everybody ready? Ready? Can you see? Amen. Screen. Say after me. I am born again. I am born again. I am spirit filled. I am spirit filled. I am spirit led. I am spirit led. I am Bible grounded. I am Bible grounded. Grace empowered. Grace empowered. Continuous in prayer. Continuous in prayer. Committed to community. Committed forgiving, forgiving. Forgiving. Loving. Loving. Generous. Generous. Enthusiastic in my service. Enthusiastic in my service. Patient in my suffering. Patient in my suffering. And prepared to see Jesus when he comes. Prepared to see Jesus when he comes. Amen. Take your seats. Take your seats. Amen. 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 We're continuing our lesson from uh, last week, and we're going to be dealing with discerning of spirits. We talked about wisdom last week and the spiritual gift of wisdom and how when we're making decisions as believers, we have to rely on God's wisdom, not man's wisdom. Because a lot of times man's wisdom is missing what God is saying. I got Many a times we are separated from what God is doing in our life because we don't understand him. And to understand God, you have to have his spirit. Amen. And we're going to dig deeper into that today as we talk about something that may sound strange, but it is very relevant to anyone who is saved and on their way to heaven, is that we have to be able to discern the spirit. So many times we look at people and we look at how they look and how they act and we base everything off of that. But there is something more happening behind the smile. And so you have to understand that you are a spirit and you live in a body. Y'all didn't yeah, know that? You are a spirit and you live in a body. When your body is dead and gone, your spirit will still exist. Hmm. My God, right. you need to think yeah. about that. Amen. And right. people that don't understand that are not prepared for what may be happening in the afterlife. That's why folks say, well, I don't know what's going to happen after this. Because they don't realize that you are a spirit. You have a living soul, which is immaterial, that lives on. And that your body is just a husk. It's just a casing. That's not really you. The real you is beyond that because the body that you're living in is decaying and growing old every day. And one day it's going to be gone. So you are a spirit and you live in a body. Say that with me. I am a spirit, I am a spirit, spirit and I live in a body. Amen. Real quick, flip in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. We're going to look at a verse there, and then we're going to go into the actual passage that we're going to work on for the next uh, few minutes or so. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 10. When you have it, say amen. 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 
you don't have it, say hold on. All right. You got it. Bless Amen. You. First Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verse 10, it says, To another, working of miracles, and to another, different kinds of tongues, and to another, the interpretation of tongues. Sorry, you go up one verse. And let's skip right over it. Uh, to another, working of miracles, to another, discerning of spirits, and to another, different kinds of tongues, and to another, interpretation of tongues. These are gifts that God has given to the body. Now, these gifts in, in verse 10, for a lot of people, are difficult to deal with. All of them. The working of miracles, people are like, wait a minute. People can work miracles? Come on now. The spiritual gift of working miracles is a power gift. It's a gift that God gives in times where there needs to be something drastic that has to happen. That has to defy the laws of nature, that has to defy doctors, that has to defy what we can imagine in our human understanding. And so then God will release the power to work a miracle. Has anybody ever seen a miracle? I've seen various miracles. I've been on the end of a few miracles in my life, and I've prayed for a few miracles in my life. These are gifts that God gives, he says, to another discerning of spirits. And we're going to highlight that because it sounds strange, doesn't it? Discerning of spirits. It almost sounds spooky. But it's not spooky because when you recognize that everybody in here is a spirit and they live in a body, and the only way you can really identify the truth of who they are is to know who they are spiritually. Oh, y'all, yeah. Y'all yes. quiet. Yes. It takes the Holy Spirit, which is God's spirit, to discern what's going on in someone else's spirit. Y'all didn't know that? To see the truth, you got to discern the spirit. You can't let somebody just say, I love you. You got to know it in the spirit. Oh, y'all missed that. Yes. I got it. You can't just let somebody say, I'm for you. You've got to discern it in the spirit. You can't just let somebody talk to you any kind of way and say, oh, yeah, uh, we're, we're best buds, but in the spirit. Oh, y'all don't believe me? Y'all believe Let me show y'all something. Let me show y'all something real quick. In Proverbs, and people have read this scripture a whole bunch of times, but I, I want you to flip there real quick. Proverbs 23, verses 6 through 8. Proverbs 23, verse 6 through 8. I'm about to show you something that's going to mess you up because you thought everybody smiling at you was your friend. Oh my God. You thought everybody that was inviting you to their house to eat is what, it was because they loved you. Uh, about to mess you up. Proverbs 23, verse, verses 6 through 8. Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? Proverbs 23, 6 through 8. Y'all that got electronic stuff, y'all can just go there real quick. People flipping through the Bible, y'all ain't get used to it. Going back to flipping through the Bible. My God. Amen. You there? Yeah. It says, do not eat the bread of misers, nor desire his delicacies. Watch this. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. That's right. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The innermost part of him, the deepest part of him, the soul, the spirit of him is not with you. My God. The morsels you have eaten, you will vomit up and you will waste your present word, your pleasant words. Y'all didn't know that a person could smile and hate you. My God. Right. 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 That's real. There are people who can lie to you with a straight face. Oh God. Mm. You, huh? You in somebody's house. Huh? Yeah. And see, if you're not operating in the spirit of God, you'll miss all that. And things will be happening behind the smile, behind the pat on the back, behind the kind words of flattery. That's why a lot, of, and I don't want to pick on the ladies, but a lot of single ladies get messed up because this man has a nice smile. Wow. He says all the right words. But because they're not operating in the spirit, you miss out. You're like, wait a minute. If you're discerning things, you, you you smiling, but you don't mean me no good. Right. 
Brothers, it's the same way for you. That, 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 that woman could be smiling. She could have all the things that you want and that you like, but there be something in her spirit that if you get hooked up with her, you're going to be messed up. A lot of times we take too many things for face value. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Yes, sir. This year I said, God, raise my antennas. I want to be walking in discernment. I don't want nobody walking up on me that ain't supposed to be on uh, around me. My God. You got to discern your inner circle. You notice that when Jesus really had to do some heavy lifting, he only took a couple of people. He didn't take the whole crowd because he knew the hearts of the people that were around him. Oh, God. And once you discern the spirit, then you've got to ask God for wisdom as to how to handle it. Because Jesus discerned that Judas was a snitch. And he kept him around. He just knew why he was there. See, sometimes you don't know why certain people are there. There are certain people you'll discern something about them and God will say, just, just leave them alone. Let them ride. Let them ride. Because what's about to go down needs to happen this way. So don't even, don't even say nothing. Other folks are like, can't you tell that that person's off? Yep, I can tell. I know exactly what's wrong with them. And I know exactly what they're about to do. Wow. And when the time comes, I'm going to say, go ahead and do it. See, see, this, this is what I'm talking about. We Christians, with the power of God and the spirit of God, the scriptures that reveal God, and we walk around getting blindsided by stuff that ain't supposed to blindside us. Amen. We're supposed to be able to detect the lie. Because you can detect the spirit. Oh, God. Right. Y'all quiet. I hope that means y'all learning and taking notes, because I don't yeah. see nobody writing. That's going to be right. Here we go. This is the passage we're going to be in for the next 15 or 20 minutes. We're going to rest in this area. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 through 14. This is where we're going to hang out for a while, all right? Because we're going to walk through this thing. We're going to talk a little bit about wisdom, but we're going to talk mostly about the spirit that is in a man. We need to understand how to discern the spirit of a person. Before we can discern devils and all that kind of, we need to be able to discern the spirit of a person. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 through 14. When you have it, say amen. 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 All right, y'all ready? Y'all open? Y'all ready to, to go deep? Y'all ready to learn something? Here we go. So the first thing you have to recognize here before we dig too deep, and I'm going to give you this, is that we said it from the top. Don't judge people by their actions. Judge them by their spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and what that's going to show us here in 1 Corinthians is that you can't know a person unless you know them, their, them by their spirit. Verse 6. However, we do not speak with uh, wisdom among those... How, however, we speak among those who are mature... Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. Number one, there is wisdom of this age. There is wisdom that is confined to this day and age and this time. There are things that people think are very wise, but they are really just for this time. And in this time, there's a lot of stuff that's going on that wasn't going on before. But there are people who are very connected to the spirit that is working in this world. And you see it on television. You see, you hear it in music. You see it in movies. There is a spirit working behind that. And you've got to be careful to discern what is the wisdom that this age is trying to teach us. And some of it is that there's all these roads to God, universalism, there's no right or wrong way, everybody just do what they want, and it sounds very wise because it's the wisdom of this age. And so it is very contagious, and it catches on quickly because that's what everybody is saying. Be careful not to follow what everybody is saying. The Bible says that the road that leads to destruction is broad and wide, and many people find it. My God. 
but the road that leads to eternal life is narrow and it is straight and few find it because you have to be seeking out the wisdom from God, not the wisdom of this world. Mm, Are y'all with me? My God. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the age for our glory. Listen, God has ordained for us to know and understand some things way before any of us ever hit the planet. God already had a plan. He already had something that we needed to understand that the rulers of this age, that the rulers of this time cannot discern because the only way they can discern it is through the spirit of God. And if they don't have the spirit of God, it's a mystery. It's hidden. Here's the proof. Verse 8, which the rulers of this age had known, uh, for, for, for if the rulers of this age had knew, if they had known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. In other words, they wouldn't have killed Jesus if they knew that it was going to produce the power of God being released into the world and people's lives were going to be changed forever. Mm -hmm. If they had known that, they would have just let Jesus keep on living and keep on ruling. Because it wasn't until Jesus went to the cross that the devil was really defeated and dethroned from the earth. It wasn't until then that the power of God could then be given to each and every one of us so that we could live a life, a, a, a life that defeats Satan, not that is controlled by Satan. Yes. And so many of us are still walking according to the wisdom of this age. And we will argue with people who are speaking right from the word of God as if they're wrong and we're right when we know what we're saying is based upon the wisdom of now. Not the wisdom that has always been the wisdom that comes from God. Are y'all hearing me? Is this too deep for you? That's good, Pastor. Verse 9. But as, as it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Listen, there is stuff that you cannot know. You cannot know. That many people are struggling. Many people are in places of confusion because they're trying to know something in themselves that they cannot know. You can't know your future. You can't know what God has planned for you. You can't know the blessing of being obedient to God unless, verse 10, you ready? But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes. even the deep things of God. This is why we got to walk in the spirit. Not because we can speak in tongues and prophesy and lay hands on people, but because it gives us divine insight to see what's going on in the world around us and understand where God wants us to go. There's so many times we cannot make godly decisions because we're not following the spirit of God, which brings wisdom to us. We're following our own spirit, which only tells us our own wants and our own desires. And if you are led by your own wants and your own desires, you're going to miss out on the perfect plan that God has for you. Right. Tara, tell somebody, God's got a plan for you. And it's better than your plan. It's better than our plan. <laughs> my God. Some people are like, hmm, it ain't better than my plan. My plan got millions, Range Rovers with 22s on it. My plan is dope. And God says, that thing going to rust. Rust. In the snow. That money ain't going to be worth nothing. It's just paper. Right. Mm -hmm. You're going to be like the rich man that kept big, building bigger and bigger barns. And then one day it was time for him to go home, to be with the Lord. He said, what you going to do with all your barns? Huh? I don't know. But he worked hard all his life because that was his plan. And the Bible says, don't store up treasures on the earth. Where moths and thieves can come and steal it. You store up treasures in heaven. But it takes godly wisdom. It takes the spirit of God to even understand and even be happy about that. So many people are operating in the flesh. That's why you're not happy about the things of God. Because you're operating in your spirit, not his spirit. Alright, we're going to go deeper. You ready? Verse 11. 
For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit that is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Y'all ready? Y'all know me and my little illustrations. Uh, come on, Brother Tim. Brother Anthony. Come on, Tierra. You might as well be yourself again. <laughs> So this is what's going on. You have the world. He's the trends, the styles. He's what is popular on the news and in music. And he's the world. Mm -hmm. This is, you get to be God. No, you get to be Satan again. Sorry. <laughs> it's the black hat and the tail. <laughs> the, there's a spirit that works in the world, and Satan's the mastermind behind the spirit. This is why it seems like he's all over the place, because he is the mastermind behind what Anthony and all his bros is doing in the world. Okay? I'm dad. I'm father God. Ooh. And this God's spirit, when you get saved, comes and joins with your spirit. And he becomes the helper in your life. And so while the world is trying to entice you and, and the devil is trying to discourage you and the father stands and says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Anything you give up in this life, it'll be returned back to you a hundredfold. Don't you worry about anything. Pray about everything. Let go of the things of this world and stand firm in your faith. Let go of that phone. And if you need my help, you can just lean on me. If it gets too tough, you can just stand in me. And so God, his spirit stands with you. Hmm. He doesn't control you unless you allow him to direct you. Uh -huh. And so he says, walk away from the things of this world. Uh -huh. Rebuke the devil. <laughs> <laughs> now you get to stand firm on your own. But then the world keeps coming. You got to walk away from him again. And then the devil shows up and you got to rebuke him again. That's, but that's the way life, anybody, anybody been walking and that's how it feels? Yes. All these people start saying, ah, and then the devil starts, yeah, see, you ain't even worth it. You, you might as well give up on all this stuff. You can't. And then the world is, and the Lord in the small, still voice is standing there ready to protect, protect you. Wow. The Bible says, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He said, well, Father, I don't have no other prayer. Father, help me. Mm -hmm. And Satan, I snap my, my finger. The Bible says he can cast out the devil with his finger. Oh, I know that. So he got on. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> now you're free again to make your choices and your decisions. Mm -hmm. See, y'all don't know. Thank you. That's what's happening behind the scenes. Spiritual. That's what's Good. going on. Way to make it plain. And the only way you can know God is to really be in relationship with him. And if you're in relationship with him, he's always right there. Sometimes we're looking at what the devil is doing and saying and what the, what's happening in the world. And it just looks like those are the only things we see. And we forget that God is right here with me. He's right there to be my strength, to be my rock, to be my fortress, to be my present help in the time of trouble. And he will show me exactly what it is that's happening. All I got to do is ask. Watch this. So verse 11 again. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. This is a revelation that hit me hard. 
everybody in this room has a spirit. And your spirit dictates who you are. And I can't know you unless I can understand your spirit. Now, you learn this from little kids. Little kids can tell when somebody's spirit is off. I'm just telling you, too. They're so sensitive, they'll look at somebody and ah! like, you be like, what's wrong with this Mr. So-and-so? Right? Somebody else walk up and they Right, right. Like, I know this person ain't going to, because they're, they're spirit. Uh -huh. Huh? As we get older, we start losing that because we start focusing on people's face and what they do for us and what we can get out of them. That we forget, so we forget that they are a spirit. And the only way we can really know them is by their spirit. And so when we get saved and the Holy Spirit comes into our life, we start seeing people for who they are. And it's like, whoa. Now, the problem is, many people don't know what to do with that. They don't know how to handle that because the Spirit teaches the kind of wisdom where he compares spiritual things to spiritual things. And so you'll walk in a room and you'll say, oh, that's, that's that jealous spirit. Like, how do you know that's a jealous spirit? Because automatically the Holy Spirit starts comparing it. Like, I've seen jealousy before, and that's in this person. Wow. Oh, y'all, uh, this is too deep. This is too yes, deep. Yes, you, you, man, you can walk up on somebody, you can tell that there's lust. Because you've seen that spirit before. Like, what's wrong? Why is that person so lustful and so... And see, when you're in the world, you pick up on these things, and you latch on to them. Like, I'm... I'm going too deep. This is too deep. You'll hook up with people because their spirit is familiar to yours. That's why you can get a whole bunch of people hanging out that all do the same thing because their spirits are hooking up. Then when you get saved, your spirit no longer agrees with what you've been comfortable with for a long time. All of a sudden, it's just not the same anymore. All of a sudden, we don't vibe like we used to. And you shouldn't because you have a different spirit. The word holy means set apart. And so if you have the Holy Spirit, then now you have a spirit that is set apart from all the other spirits that operate in this world. And when I mean spirits, I'm talking about each individual person has an individual spirit that defines who they are. I'm not talking about demons yet. We're not talking about that. I'm just talking about people's spirit. You ever walk up on somebody and they just got a kind spirit? This person's just, they just got a kind. And then you walk up on somebody and they just got a deceitful spirit. You know that they up to something. You hold it, check in your pocket. <laughs> They might get me because you can discern the spirit, but you don't understand it without the Holy Spirit because then the Holy Spirit tells you what to do with it. There are certain people that need to be rebuked. There are certain people that need to be loved and comforted. Oh, y'all don't, y'all don't. Yes, yes, yes. You got to be more cognizant about the people that are around you. Mm -hmm. There's some people that have rebellious spirits. Yeah. Like, you're, you are just rebellious. Anything anybody say, you say the opposite. Mm -hmm. Any, anytime somebody tell you do anything, you just, well... <laughs> and so you gotta know, wait a minute, because certain spirits, watch this, Certain things in you agree with God. Naturally, they agree with God. And other things in you agree with Satan. Naturally. Just because it's the right thing doesn't mean that God ordained it, but he may agree with loving your neighbor. And that's why somebody would say, I don't need God to be a good person. I don't need church or Bible to be a good person. I'm kind to my neighbor. And amen, that does agree with God. But there's another part of you that doesn't. 
And that's the part that needs to be redeemed because it's not about being a good person. It's about saving your soul. And there's too many good people that say, well, I'm good, so I don't need church. I don't need Jesus. I don't need any of that. And they don't understand that from the top, I told you, there is an eternal reality that you're going to have to deal with if, if you understand that you, you are a spirit. That you are more than just this physical body. There is more to you. And so how you live in this day and time is going to matter when this body goes. Because then where are you going to go? You're either going to stay hanging out with the devil and going where he goes. Or you're going to be hooked up with God and you're going to be where he is. It's as simple as that. It's not rocket science. The people who are going to be with God, they started being with him right here, right now. Amen. The people that are going to end up with Satan I already made their commitment to be with them. And so whatever his fate is, is their fate. It's not this evil plot that God wants to throw people into hell. The whole time he's reaching out to people and call, crying out to people and calling people to salvation. But they have a choice. Tell somebody, you got a choice. You got a choice. Listen, when it comes down to it, let me wrap this up. Verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Mm-hmm. Walking with God puts you in a place where there are things that other people can't know because they got to know God to know it. Right. Churches have made walking with God about getting material blessings. Right. And once people figure out that they don't need God to get material blessings, people stop going to church. Mm -hmm. They don't realize that that parlor trip, that uh, circus act, all it does is set people up for long-term failure. When in all actuality, being saved, walking with Jesus, is connecting yourself to God in a way that he can reveal to you the purpose, the plan, the meaning of life. There are some people that are walking with God. You ask them, so what's God want you to do? This and this. People are like, how do you know that that's what you're supposed to do? Because that's what the Lord told me. He told me I'm supposed to do this. Well, I don't know. I think I'm supposed to do this, and I think I'm supposed to do that. That's because you haven't gone to God and sat down with him. And until you sit down with God long enough to really get to know him and understand him and understand what he wants from, from you and for you, you're going to be drifting through life, making things up as you go along. You're going to run through all these different relationships that probably all they did was hurt you and, and, and make you bitter, give you bad ideas about relationships. Why not wait for God to show you who? Even if that person's not perfect, it's still the who that God assigned to you. I'd rather have an imperfect person that God assigned to me right. than for me to just go find somebody. Because right. any single person can walk out this door today and get hooked up. Wow. And that's just the truth. We keep it real on 13th and Chambers. Right. <laughs> it don't take a whole lot of nothing. You can just go out, hey, what's up? All right. Let's, I'll call you later. And it's done. But that don't mean that's who God. That don't. And if you discern the spirit, you, wow. If you walk in discernment uh -huh. of the spirit, you'll notice and see how much of a headache you're about to run into right. before you even mess with that person. Amen. And you'll be able to say to God, "God, now you, is this you?" Because if this is your headache, 
then you gonna you gonna help me through it. But if this is my own creation, yes. I'm hooking up with a familiar spirit because we just we just hit it off from here on out. Them folks that you just hit it off with, you better check and see what's hitting it off. Is it our lust hitting off? Uh, yeah. is, it, is, it, is it our deceitfulness hitting off? What's hitting off? Why, how, what are we hitting off here? Are y'all not? Uh -huh. Because you can't understand who this person is unless you discern the spirit. That's when people used to ask me, and this is, this, this is, I had to give you this because when people ask me, well, how do you know what job to take? Now you know how I'm, because I'm discerning the spirit. Like, God is, and it might not be the amount of money that you think you're supposed to make, but it might be right where God wants you because he's setting you up for something else. God will put you in one place to set you up for another place. Come on, that. That go to one school, and God puts you there because you need to meet somebody that was going to change your life. There are divine appointments. Say that with me, divine appointments. At first, it doesn't look like much. There are so many people that, uh, when I was working for transportation, working for the school, I met people, and it was life-altering when we connected. They were going in one direction. I walked in. God hooked us up. They went in a totally different direction. And there was a domino effect. There were a lot of people whose lives were touched and changed from just one obedient step. A friend of Mr. Renetta Hayes, she said this to me yesterday. She said, you, you, you could be surprised what you can accomplish one obedient step at a time. Yeah. That's good. One obedient step at a time. You need to be discerning the direction. Here we go. I got to finish this up here. Y'all going to go home and study this. I'm going to go home and study this chapter. This is good. Um, verse 13. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches. Y'all ready for this? But which the Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. There are things that you cannot know unless you are spiritually discerned. For every believer in this room that struggles with decision making, you have to learn to connect to the Spirit of God. And so you need these things. Y'all ready? Start writing. You ready to write? You have to have an active, fervent prayer life. I know I don't want to be religious praying every day, but if you don't pray every day, you're not going to be connected. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm just telling you the truth. Without prayer daily, I mean fervent prayer. I don't mean, Father, bless my day, bless my family, bless my mama, bless my daddy, bless my sister, bless my brother. Amen. That's not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about getting into the presence of God and saying, Lord, download into me. Show me. Lord, I need more of you and less of me. God, I need more love in my life. I need more joy. I need more peace. I need more kindness. I need more. God, I just need more of you because me, I've been overrunning and overriding. Every, I just need more of you. I need to connect with you. My attitude needs adjustment. I just need more of you, and I need you to direct and order my steps. And see, when you get to that place, you're going to walk in discernment. You don't walk up and say, oh, I ain't supposed to be over there. Right, right. Um, that's number one. Number two, this is going to shock you. But I'm going to tell you, it will take your discernment and your prayer life to another level. Ask the Lord for the gift of time. 
Mm -hmm. You asking for it. You don't need 20 million prayer hours and people slinging oil at you. Amen. Make and play. the reason why you need it is because there's things that are prayed in the spirit that you don't even know what to pray for. And so you just need to connect to God and let the spirit pray. Amen. That's good. Yeah. And I'll go deeper in that next week because it, it, it connects with some of the other things I'm going to talk about. But you need the gift. So you need to be able to sit down because you run out of words, right? Anybody that really be praying, you, you run out of words. Well, I don't even know. Right. So, Lord. Right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> Thirdly, and this is important, this is important, you have to read the word as if you're reading for a test. Some people don't get that. You've got to read the word of God as if it is preparing you to face a test because it is. Right. <laughs> Everything you study in the word of God, life is going to test you on. But if you read it in the word, when you see it, you're like, oh, I know what to do here. The Bible says, I'm telling you, this changed the way I view life. The Bible says that the word of God in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, write it in your notes. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, this is a verse you need to memorize, is that. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing the soul and the spirit, the marrow and the bone. The word will cut through people's junk. It'll cut through your junk. When you study the word as if you were studying it to take a test, it will transform the way you see life. Because now it just won't be words. You'll be walking around and say, wait a minute. See, the spirit right now is comparing spiritual things. Whoa. How did you memorize that? Because it's, it's applied. People me remember things that they apply. Right. Yeah. I don't remember stuff that I just read. You say, why can't I remember scripture? Because you're not applying it. If you really understood that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out the mouth of God, you would then remember that because you live that. Right, 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 right. Nobody has to tell you, yea, in all these things, I'm more than a conqueror, because I'm living a life of conquering because the word says, and so that's the way I live. There's a lot of benefits of the word that people are not enjoying because they won't read it as if they have to live it, as if it has to happen in their life. That's why people aren't convicted of sin. Because, oh, I know the Bible says that, but. And so when the test comes, you're not convicted because you weren't. Oh, the Bible says don't gossip, and I feel like I'm gossiping. You feel it. You feel it. Like, oh, okay, I'm shutting up. Like, what's the matter? No, I, I can't. I know. Amen. Amen. Everybody stand. While our singers are coming up, I, I want to open the door. That if you say, Pastor, I'm I'm not discerning like that. I need to connect to the Lord in a way that I can discern what God is saying. Then I'm gonna pray for the Lord. Say I'm, I'm, I need I need a boost in that area. I need God to open up my eyes so I can discern much better. Amen. Number two, if you know that you're not walking with the Lord and you have strayed away from God, 
or maybe you've never really known him like I've been talking about. Because the way I've been talking about God, everybody don't know him like that. They know of God, but they don't know him like that. You say, well, Pastor, I don't I don't know God like that. Can you pray for me? I want you right now. Come on. Come on. Come on from where you are. You don't know him like that. This where you need to be. You don't need to walk out of this room not knowing him like that. Amen. If y'all are pure, pure, come on in here. I ain't gonna hurt you. I love you. I love you so much. I ain't scared of you. Amen. Anyone else? He said, that Pastor, pray for me. I, I need, I need, I need that discernment. I need to be closer. Amen. Amen. So those of you that down here, I just want to pray for God to open your understanding. Bible says that Paul prayed that you would know and understand God's divine will with all spiritual understanding. Sometimes we get so caught up in life that all we see is life. We don't see what God is doing in the spirit. And those people, they, they said there's some that, that are on Facebook that want this prayer. I'm praying for you too. Amen. And so as we pray, just lift your hands. Hand. There ain't no power in me. Power is in God. And so you're going to have to tug on the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, open my heaven. God, reveal to me the things that I haven't seen. Show me the areas where I have blind spots, Lord. Show me the, the, in the areas where I'm struggling. Because I see this person's face and I see what they're doing, but yet I'm not discerning what's happening behind it. And then Lord, give me the wisdom. To deal with what's going on behind you.
that know that they have been struggling to see what you want them to see, that their discernment has been off. And so, God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would clarify and that you would crystallize the thing that you want them to see. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that the mistakes that they have made, that they would not walk on condemnation. There's a spirit of condemnation. I don't know who you are, but there's a spirit of condemnation on you because of the mistakes that you made because you didn't discern correctly. But the Lord says that you are forgiven. Now trust him and he will direct you from this point forward. And so I pray for that individual that has that issue. And I pray, God, that you would allow them to feel your grace and your mercy and know that you have not forsaken them, that you still have a purpose and a plan for their life, and that you will direct them from this point. God, I pray for that individual that feels lost right now. They feel lost. They feel like everything is a haze, and they're just, they're just lost, and they can't see anything. It's as if they feel like God is not speaking to them. He's not talking to them, but God is talking to you. God is speaking to you. You just have, you just have to cut out the distractions. And so I pray that every distraction will be, will be removed and that they would operate in your spirit and that they would reconnect themselves to a body of believers that pray. You need to surround yourself with prayer. I don't know who I'm talking to because I can't see it, but you need to surround yourself with prayer and praying people. That's what the Lord says. And so I pray for that individual right now that you would send the people and that you would connect them to the person that they need to be around. Lord, help them to discern their inner circle because there are people that are pulling them down and they need people that will build them up in their faith and in their belief. Father, we pray for each and every viewer in the name of Jesus that they will come to know you and hear you in a clear and concise manner, that their spiritual eyes and ears will be open, that they will see past what is on a person's face, but they will see what's happening in the spirit. We thank you for it. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.